right guys, this is the first start of chapter nine, which is telephone techniques. Now this lecture, or this, this chapter is split up into two lectures because there is a lot of information that goes around with telephone techniques and this one is really important. So the first chapter, we're really gonna get into telephone use in the medical office, okay? That's what we're gonna focus on through this lecture here. So we're gonna be able to define, spell and pronounce all the terms listed in the vocab. Uh, we'll identify and explain the features of a multiple telephone line system and how each can be used effectively in a healthcare facility. We'll have to do the following related to effective use of a telephone. We'll have to be able to discuss uh, the telephone equipment needed by a healthcare facility, summarize active learning, listening skills, demonstrate, and, uh, uh, demonstrate effective and professional telephone techniques, and consider the importance of tone of voice and enunciation. Uh, we'll explain the importance of thinking ahead when managing telephone calls, also describe the correct way to answer telephone in the office. Describe the, scre the screening process of incoming calls and list several questions to ask when handling an emergency call. And then do the following related to taking a message. You need to be able to document telephone messages accurately. You need to list the seven elements of a correctly handle handled telephone message. And then report relevant information correctly, uh, concisely, and accurately to the appropriate person. So let's get started here. Um, so the telephone. Okay, the telephone is a lifeline of a medical practice. That's how the most communication goes out throughout the office, incoming calls in from patients. Um, so everything kind of revolves around the telephone. So there are many different places that these, that these telephone calls come from. Um, it can be from established patients who are calling in to ask and check up on test results or calling in to reschedule an appointment. It could be new patients that are looking to get into the practice. Okay? They want to be seen by a doctor in your office and uh, you know, they could be inquiring about more information. It could be reports of treatment results or emergencies. Okay? It could be somebody calling in from another clinic saying, hey, we just got the test results back and this is what's going on. It could be phys physician referrals, another office calling you to refer a uh, another patient to you that needs some sort of specialty treatment. Laboratory results, okay? Uh, one of your patients went out and got an MRI, those results are coming back, or maybe even um, like a blood test or urine analysis. Um, and then pharmacies and patient, for, uh, patient calls for pre prescription refills. Um, so you might have a physician or, uh, I'm sorry, a pharmacy or a patient call to you about refilling their prescription and getting that done. So treat all phone calls with respect and courtesy because it is the representation of that medical office. That is the lifeline of the clinic. If you don't have a good telephone etiquette and telephone techniques, you know, your practice will suffer. So some of the tools that you'll need to use is it's a multi-line telephone. And that is what we use in the switchboard room. That is a multi-line telephone. You can have more than one call coming in at one time. So familiarity with that medical line, uh, the multiple line telephone system is a must for that medical assistant. That's why you have to complete your 40 hours in that switchboard room. You have to get practice at, at, at transferring calls, screening them, sending them to the right person. Um, you know, handling more than one phone call at a time. So it is really important that you guys get in there and get that practice done. So even the smallest of a healthcare facility has to have at least two telephone lines. Now in the switchboard room, you have two telephone lines. Um, this allows you to transfer calls and possibly set up conference calls as needed. And each, it has a button for each line. So if you look on the side of your, uh, the right hand side of your telephone in the switchboard room, or even the one on my desk, you'll see on the side there's two numbers that correspond to that telephone. Um, and you can select which line you wanna use by uh, the two buttons on the right hand side there. And here's an example of a multiple line telephone. Now this line, this is a bigger one. This has multiple lines. As you can tell, look at all the extensions that are available over here. Uh, so this is, this is a multiple line telephone and this allows uh, numerous calls to come into the office at once. Then you have the headset which is this guy here, which I showed you in the last presentation. And I'll continue to go over it because it is essential and it is a really nice and, and uh, tool to have in the medical office. And this can improve your ergonomics and help you improve your next train. So if you can think about it, okay, you answer the telephone and you're trying to pin it into your ear and type into the computer, okay? That isn't good ergonomics. That's gonna increase your next train and, that, and that's gonna, uh, you know, in turn, it could lead to something along down the road. Now, if you have the headset, you put the headset on, you can answer the call, okay, and you can type without having to pin it to your ear, uh, this resulting in less head strain. Basically, it's a combination of, if you look at it here, let me just snap it off here, it's a combination of an earphone and a microphone all in this one little thing. So it, it's very efficient, it's very lightweight, and it's comfortable. And you can also adjust the volume of this one 
on the side, you can go up with the volume, you can go down with the volume, and that all snaps in right there. And then this just snaps into the headpiece, just like that, and you're good to go. Um, so many headsets can be muted so that you can talk with someone without the caller hearing you as well. So these guys, these are excellent tools. Uh, that's why we have one in the switchboard room it's for you guys to practice with, you guys to get familiar with, um, so that when you use one in the medical office, you're ready to go and you'll have no issues um, with the functionality of that. <clears throat> so let's talk about some features of your multiple telephone line phone. There's speaker phone. Okay, and the speaker phone function allows you to hear and speak to the caller without using the handset or the headset. Now, you have to be very careful with using the speakerphone in a medical office. Most calls, you will be discussing some confidential information, and if you have it on speakerphone for everybody to hear, you are breaking HIPAA guidelines. Um, conference calls is a feature. So conference calls are where multiple people can call in from different locations and then be in that phone conversation together. And then you have caller ID. So caller ID allows the user to see who is calling before you actually pick up the phone. Just like on all of our cell phones, we know what caller ID is now. Voicemail, we should all know what voicemail is as well, but it is, it is widely used in today's business offices because it affords an around the clock method to receiving patient messages. Um, the intercom, the intercom allows you for two way communication without requiring you to pick up a handset or a headset. So if you need to call into another room with a telephone, you can use that intercom call. Um, the hold button or the call hold, the hold button allows you to interrupt the call momentarily, put them on hold, um, and then handle another situation if you need to be, such as transferring another call or handling an emergency call. And then you have speed dialing, and speed dialing allows you to program keys to the telephone keypad to automatically call a store telephone number by pressing just one key. All right, so that's kind of a cool uh, thing to have as well. So telephone equipment needs in the healthcare facility. So it's important that two incoming lines are there, along with a private outgoing number, um, with a separate number for the provider's use is the minimum requirement, okay? It is, it's, it's what you need in the office. So at least two lines coming into the office and then a private outgoing number that the physician can call from. So one medical assistant can handle no more than two incoming lines. So if you have more than two, two lines coming into the, uh, to the clinic, you're gonna need to have two, more than two medical assistants. And the, and the telephone um, should be placed where they are accessible but private um, so a telephone should be available in like the laboratory areas and the clinical areas, and then you should have multiple phones in the reception and business office areas. That way, um, you're handling all of your needs there. So you would think, since we're talking about telephone techniques and, and the thing that we do on telephone the most is talk. However, so you would think that's where we would start, but however, we need to start with active listening. Now we talked about this back in previous chapters, um, but this is really important. And this is, this, this uh, table, or this figure is on page 130 in your textbook. But active listening involves listening to what the speaker is saying to you, interpreting what that message was, and then restating that message to make sure that you received it correctly. All right, so you really need to practice fo focusing on the call at hand, really try to understand what that patient is trying to, to get, get across to you, and then relay that message to them just to clarify them. So active listening, it requires you to be present in the moment. Your focus needs to be solely on that conversation. Don't interrupt the other speaker, and don't start forming your response before the person has finished speaking. Okay, that will help create some bias in there. Confirm what the speaker has said, and ask if your interpretation is correct, and then always be respectful and professional. If you can do all these things, guys, you will be successful in this field. So developing a ple uh, pleasing telephone voice, all right? So you are representing the healthcare practice when you, whenever you answer that phone. So it's really important that you guys have a, a pleasing telephone personality, okay? So it, it, the things that you can do, you need to use proper enunciation. Now enunciation is a way you pronounce words. You need to hit every syllable. Diction, pitch, and clarity, okay? Use pleasant inflection with a friendly and warm tone. Uh, avoid, uh, I'm sorry, use courtesy and be tactful with your speech. And then avoid medical jargon and use correct grammar. Now, medical jargon is something that is a medical term that a person who without medical experience would not understand. For example, like osteoarthritis. Okay, we've all heard of that. But it could another way you could do that is uh, you know you could say inflammation of the bone and joint. That way, it is more easy for the um, the uh, patient to understand. The number one key here, guys, is whenever you pick up the phone and you answer the phone and you're saying you know, your, your office greeting, 
always say it with a smile. Okay, if you're saying it with a smile, you know, that comes across in your voice and the way that you handle yourself. So always answer the phone with a smile. Um, you should never answer the telephone while you're eating, drinking, or chewing gum, okay, because that, you know, you don't want to hear them smacking, or you, they don't want to hear you smacking in their ear. When you answer that phone call, give your attention, your, your full attention, and, pre and give the caller your full attention and present a professional, friendly image of that office. You are that image. That is their connection to the office, so you need to make a good one. And then avoid speaking in, a, in monotone, um, you know, add that pitch and that diction, okay, get it so that it's kind of like a roller coaster ride, you know, you're not just sitting there and talking like this on the phone because that's not really interesting for them to hear. Um, so you really want to, you know, kind of spice it up and add that, um, avoid that monotone. Now, if you look on page 132, there is a procedure 9-1 there, and that's to help you demonstrate professional telephone techniques. Now, if you are unsure and you want to work on that before you get into the switchboard room, really look at 9-1 and practice with yourself or ask another classmate in here to help you out. <laughs> so thinking ahead. So before you call, it's important that you have all the necessary information that you need to make that call. Um, you know, have a pen and pad ready to take notes for anything that they tell you uh, in return. And then write down a list of questions or goals for that conversation. That's a, that's a good way to go into it. So what a, if you're calling a patient for a follow-up appointment, what are you trying to do? You know, follow-up appointment, date and time, any needs, special instructions, that type of thing. You can write those down to help you keep that list going. So keep a list of frequently called numbers. Well, that will help you save time. So if you're frequently calling different doctor's offices um, or laboratory clinics, you know, have them down in a place that's easy to reach. That way you can uh, just get there, look at that number, make that phone call. Uh, so if, it's important to keep the call short and simple uh, because if you're on that phone a long time, you, you're holding up that line and, and somebody else might be trying to call into you. So confidentiality over the telephone, guys. Okay, this is, this is key. So all communication in a healthcare facility must remain confidential. Okay, and that includes over the telephone, okay, making calls to patients or to other healthcare providers. So if, if patient sensitive information needs to be discussed, whether with the patient or with another healthcare provider, place the call in an area where others cannot hear. All right, so that might not be at your medical assisting desk, okay, your reception desk up front. However, nowadays we see that partition glass in between the two, so you can kind of cut yourself off from uh, the reception room so you can make these patient sensitive calls. And you really need to be careful when using speakerphone as I mentioned earlier, because the sound of the speakerphone will actually travel a lot further than you think. So um, you really need to be careful when you're using the speakerphone in the medical office because if there's any sensitive information, patient sensitive information on that, on that call, it could be detrimental to you. Answering promptly. Now what I mean by promptly is quickly. You always want to answer the call um, quickly and always by the third ring. So with multiple lines, you might have multiple calls coming in at once. So if that's the case, answer the first one and when the second one rings in, place that call on hold and answer the second call to put them on hold. If one of those calls is an emergency, so say, uh, for example, if the first caller calls in and they're just trying to schedule an appointment, okay, um, and then all of a sudden you get a second call coming in, so you put the first call on hold, answer the second call, and you realize that this is an emergency situation, okay? Now you need to tend to that emergency. So if it's an emergency, let others on hold know that they might have to wait or to be called back. So quickly, flip back over to the other call, say, uh, you know, an emergency has just come up, please hold or we will give you, or call back in, in 20 minutes, okay? Make that happen. Um, and then, uh, you know, if the call is an emergency, prompt, the atten prompt attention could save their life. So it's important that you take care of that emergent situation. Um, don't multitask while on a phone call. They don't be calling, typing, you know, making your coffee, things like that. So treat the phone call just as if the patient were standing in front of you in the office, devoting, devoting all your attention to them. So the first thing you do when you answer the phone call is you're going to have to identify the facility or one of the things you have to do is when you make a phone call to a patient is to identify the facility. So never rush. All calls should be, clear, uh, should be able to be clearly understood exactly what is being said. Never just try to get through the information as fast as you can. Really take your time and explain yourself. So when you answer that phone call, or you're, or you're placing that phone call, the first thing you need to do is identify the facility. Okay, where are you calling from? Here in, um, in the switchboard room, we answer the phone by saying, thank you for calling Loring Job Corps Center. How may I direct your call? Okay, so we've identified that facility first off. 
Now in a medical facility, you should say your name. So Dr. Smith's office, Cody speaking, how may I help you? Or something along those lines. Okay, so then choose a greeting and practice saying it. So really get comfortable with saying that. Um, sometimes the physicians avoid using the title doctor when calling a patient. And that could be just to, uh, to protect their patient's confidentiality, particularly when you're calling like a shared line, like a home line or a work phone. Um, you know, if you're calling the personal cell phone, maybe that's something different um, because it's personally their, their phone. But if you're calling the house phone, leaving a message on, a boy, on the answering machine, and you say, you know, this is Dr. Smith's office, just wanna call you about, you know, your colonoscopy tomorrow. You know, that's kind of a, a breach of patient confidentiality. So they really are careful with using doctor when making phone calls. Um, so if somebody calls into the office, okay, um, it's important that you identify that caller. Who is calling you and why are they calling? If they don't identify themselves at first, ask who is calling. And that could be simply, um, simply saying, may I ask who's calling? Um, and that will handle it right there. Once they tell you that, write down their name immediately and try to use it as many times throughout that conversation as possible. That way it helps stick in your head and, you, and they feel more comfortable talking to you. Um, if they don't identify themselves, you have to handle them according to office policy. Unidentified callers could be a patient, therefore every attempt to identify the patient and assist them should be made. Such callers may also be salespeople, okay, who are fully aware that if their identity is revealed, they will never get the opportunity to, to speak to the physician. So it's really important that you follow office policy on how to handle those callers who don't want to identify themselves. So screening incoming calls. This is gonna be a big part of your job. Okay, you're gonna be answering phone calls and handling them and transferring them to the people, to the proper people. So it's important to find out exactly how calls are to be handled when the physician is out of the office and under what circumstances he or she can be interrupted when on the premises. The first step to screening calls is to determine who the caller is and the nature of caller and the nature of the call. Do they need to be transferred to the physician or to maybe to the triage area, to billing, um, et cetera, et cetera, okay guys? So learn the physician's preferences for receiving calls or returning them later on. Explain that the physician will return calls as soon as possible and provide an approximate time frame from when the caller can expect to hear back. Ask for a phone number from the caller. So if you guys are disconnected or you need to make a return call, then you have that number as well. And then of course record all messages accurately and document all calls. If the call is an emergency, um, the policies for handling emergency calls applies. Uh, maybe you have to uh, get to 911 and activate EMS and go from there. Maybe you follow a different route. So here's some questions to ask. So these questions can be asked when handling an emergency call. First off, you never wanna hang up for an emergency call. Quickly, if you have another person on hold, transfer over and say, you know, I have an emergency on the other line. Um, you're either gonna to need to continue to hold it, please call back later. Um, make sure you get a name from them right when they first start. You always want their name. Ask what telephone number can they be reached if you guys get disconnected? Where are you located? What are your chief symptoms? When did they start? Has this happened before? Are you alone? Do you need transportation or do you have transportation? Okay, get all this information, activate EMS and relay their answers to them and then transfer back to the other phone line and keep them until EMS arrives at their side. Once EMS arrives at your side, you have done your job guys. You no longer need to, to, to follow up with that call and make sure that they are taken care of the way they need to. EMS will take over and handle that emergent situation. So getting the information the provider needs. So as a medical assistant gains experience, so as you're out in the field and you start working more and more and you, you're understanding how your office works um, and you know the provider better, uh, you'll begin to have a sense of the questions the provider will have. All right, so the more you do it, the more experience you'll have, the better questions you'll, you'll be able to come up with. So remember always to be patient with those patients. All right, most times when a patient calls into the office, uh, you know, they're ill, sick or injured, they could be agitated and angry, so practicing and having patience with them, you know, will provide that utmost and optimal care. If the provider is unavailable for only part of the day, take a message and inform the caller that the provider currently is out of the office, but when they return, they will make that call back to them. And then screening calls are an important task for medical assistants who answer the telephone. So you guys will answer the telephone, okay? You'll deal with scheduling, you'll deal with, um, you know, working with patients. So you will be dealing with the telephone. So you, be, you have to be proficient with screening calls. Um, and we start to get that practice in the, in the switchboard room, but you'll really get a real taste of it if you go to work-based learning or if um, once you land that job.
So placing collars on hold. So before you ever place a collar on hold, ask them if they can be placed on hold first. Uh, so keep the collars on hold once they get on hold as short as possible. Once permitted, check back with the patient uh, that's holding for the physician. So if they call and they're asking you to speak with the physician, absolutely transfer them to them if that's what your, uh, your office policy says. Now if they're on hold for an extended amount of time, check back every minute. Offer to have the call return rather than wait on hold. So if they're on hold for a, a couple minutes, offer them to call back or, or have the physician call them um, rather than sit there and wait on hold. And always thank the caller for waiting. They're taking time out of their day um, to be on hold for you. Some requests might handle, um, <clears throat> excuse me, requests that might require pulling the patient's charts or files are best handled by, you know, ending the call, going to pull that chart, and then returning that call to the patient. So remember that leaving a person on hold times up one of the physician's lines, and an emergency call could be coming through, or new patients might be attempting to call, and you're, you're putting them on hold for that time and, and taking up that line. So you really have to be use hold sparingly, um, but it, it, it is an, an important tool as well. So transferring the call. So ask permission when placing caller on hold and when transferring calls. So identify the caller to the person receiving the transfer call. So for example here, if you are in the switchboard room, okay, this is what this means. Somebody calls in and they want to speak to the center director. Now you can transfer them to the center director's assistant because we don't directly send it to the center director. So when you're making that phone call, um, you know, get the name and the reason why they're calling. Okay, identify the caller, uh, caller. Uh, okay, right here, sorry. You know, you, you need to know who is calling and why they're calling. That way when you get to that center directors and you're, you're transferring to them, you can tell them, just so you know, John Doe is, is calling you and it's re in regards to, um, you know, scheduling his next appointment. And then you can transfer that call through and then those two lines will be connected and the person you were transferring them to knows what to expect with this caller. So if unavailable, ask the caller if he or she would prefer to leave a voicemail or to take a message. And then know how to direct calls to the appropriate staff member. You guys will have plenty of practice with that um, in that switchboard room. <coughs> Excuse me. So any person who refuses to give you a name should not be put through unless the medical assistant has been instructed to do so. So you can simply say, you know, I'm sorry, but office policy states that if I don't know who you are, I'm not supposed to put you through to the physician. So because the physician's office often is a hectic place, most require that a message be taken so that the medical record can be reviewed, um, the patient's request considered, and the patient called back with questions or instructions from that doctor. So that's, that's a good point there. Taking a message, guys. This is something you will have to do a lot. Now this can be either done um, on electronic, electronically or it can be done on paper. So use a message pad or a computer system to record the following. Whenever somebody calls in, you need to know their name of their person that's calling, the name of the person they're trying to, uh, to get in contact with, um, all contact numbers for that caller that is calling, the reason why they're calling, what needs to happen, the date and time of the call, and then your initials because you were the one that took the call. So never use small scraps of paper for messages because those are likely going to be easily lost. Use a, a phone message book or your computer system. Impression, impression sensitive message pads, which provide a copy for each page, um, ensure that no message is forgotten and the best way to keep track of handwritten messages. And then electronic uh, software systems usually populate the name, address, phone number, date, and time of, the time of the message. Therefore, the only thing you need to enter is the type of the re uh, type and the reason of, for the call and what the patient would like the physician to do. So, you know, as always, Electronic systems are going to be easier and more efficient. Um, and here's an example of each one here. This is like your pressure sensitive uh, pad, message pads that you will have. And this is something, and you will see both of these on your book on page 136 because they're hard to see on here. They're even hard for me to see on here. So look at 136 in your book and see the two different types of systems that we have. And we're almost done here guys for this first part of the lecture. So taking action on telephone messages. So they've called in, they have a request, they need to action take it. Um, so the message procedure is incomplete until that necessary action is taken. It's important to add notation to carry over to the next day if it's necessary. So if they call at the end of the day, they need this done, you don't have the time of the day, make sure you make a notation um, and you come back and follow up with that the next day. And note the patient's attitudes if significant to help the patient or physician when returning the calls. So if they call and they're very angry, they're very upset, and they're cussing at you and calling you every name in the book, okay, make sure you note that down 
so that the physician is aware of, of that, that patient's attitude to begin with. So don't trust any memory messages, okay? Don't just think, oh yeah, I'll remember to do that. Uh, that were intended to, uh, to from, I'm sorry, that were not intended to from the previous days. So that's why you have to put that notation in because you don't wanna just try have to remember that you have to do that tomorrow because most generally you will forget. Always carry them further either electronically or in writing. If you look at page 136 in your book, you'll see procedure 9-2, and this is how to document a telephone message and report relevant information concisely and accurately. It's important to get on there. It's important to practice that because it is good knowledge. And then the last slide we're gonna to do today, guys, is retaining records of telephone messages. So make sure accurate telephone records are kept to ensure good patient care and customer service. So offices should have a policy on retention of those messages. Electronic systems should directly uh, will send them directly to their medical records so you can keep everything in one place. And it's important to keep handwritten, handwritten messages passed for the period of the statute of limitations of your state because if you're ever taken to court, they're saying, we've, we've never had this conversation, I never called the office. You have that proof um, through your documentation skills. So it's important to keep all that stuff. All right, guys, and that's literally where we're gonna end today. Uh, you have an assignment and a critical thinking question for this section of, uh, for this section of the chapter. Um, so it's, it's all located on Evolve as 9.1, okay? And then it gets into the name of the title and, and make sure you just complete your assignment and your critical thinking before you go on to lecture 9.2, which we will talk about next time. You know, keep it up, have fun.